I can. <laughs> uh, catch all this. This is all good stuff. Now, do you have? Are you gonna, are you gonna tripod the camera or? I'm just holding it. I, my tri my my tripod sucks. <laughs> oh, it's a small little. Like that. It, it's a oh, okay. yeah. It's a small little thing, but it's like it. It's like I don't know. It just doesn't work the way that it should. I don't know. It's just a little piece of crap little thing that they sent me with it. So. Oh. <laughs> So you're gonna hold it up to the whole thing? That's okay. that's, that's kind of how I do it on other interviews, pretty oh, much. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling anytime. Okay, I'm I'm rolling right now. <laughs> All right. right, I'll do like a little introduction, and then uh, we'll just kind of go into it like I okay. always do. Hey everybody, right. Frank Slauson here, and uh, right now I got a special. Well, this is kind of a nice thing because we we got our cameras both rolling. Uh, well, as far as uh, camera goes, anyway, uh, we did an interview about a month ago that for some reason didn't record, so we're doing it again a month later, and uh, I am talking with uh, independent director Damon Packard. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. You kind of you kind of look like Andrew Dice Clay a little bit. You know? <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever told you that, but uh, but. Uh, Oh, welcome. So you just interviewed Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah, yeah, I did. And, uh, and who did you who did you do before that? Uh, let's see, Michael Ray Bauer. Oh right, right, right. that's right. You're telling me right. Okay. Yep. And your interview is going right. to probably go before uh, Lloyd Kaufman, see, because I got his schedule to go up uh, uh, October 29th. So I'm going oh. I'm going to try to get yours up as soon as I can. Oh. Okay. So I promised you would go up in October. So. Here we are in October. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had uh, a number of technical setbacks. First, the, the camera, the memory card, and then your microphone. And, yep. Uh, so, so here we are. Yeah. The micro okay. the microphone was just I, I I couldn't believe it. You know I I said you know I had that microphone for a long time and it you know worked for years and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. all of a sudden it just stopped working. I'm just like what the hell? And I thought it was like mom dad's computer at first. Tried it on my computer, wouldn't work. So I had to go get yeah. go to Radio Shack and spend twenty six bucks on a on a, can, on a new microphone. Oh. And this one right here, oh, a Radio Shack. Too expensive. Well, the one that I got before was a Philips, and it was only ten dollars at Walmart. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. it it definitely got now, me is that through. A, go is ahead. that a mono mic or a stereo? No, it's a mono mic, right? I yeah. don't really know. It probably a possibility. Yeah. I used to find these little stereo mics from Radio Shack back in the eighties to do a lot of uh, sound recording. But anyways, yeah. So, so uh, I'm uh, I'm meeting a friend in exactly forty five minutes okay. to go see to go see the Toolbox Murders at the Silent Movie Theater, which is a venue we have out here. It's uh, also known as Cine Family. I'll be going to these midnights. They're doing midnight shows every single day of this month uh, of October. Oh, and, yeah. uh, uh Toolbox Murders isn't one that I'm really looking forward to. It's it's uh, kind of a slow one. And one last night wasn't very good either, but uh, but it's been a fun month. Of, 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 it's been a movie bonanza month, really. Just a lot of screenings, a lot of... I went to a 12-hour marathon at the New Beverly, uh, you know, just last week. In between these, these regular midnight shows, we're going to every single night. And uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up yet. You know, more slasher films... You name it. So it's like a bunch of like independent films, mostly, huh? Well, no, they're mainstream films. They're they're, they're you know films that were released in the seventies and eighties. Uh, they're not they're not independent, but uh, some of them are, are lesser known than others. Some of them are you know uh, foreign films or Spanish films or Italian or a few Italian films like the Cannibal films. I don't know if you're familiar with those Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferox, you know those. Um, uh, there's one last night called uh, Night of the Bloody Apes, which was a Spanish film, I think, uh, or Mexican film. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was a Mexican film. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, Toolbox Murders it is tonight. Okay. Oh, there goes the DVD. Savage DVD. Oh, it's, it's finally done. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about that. You have. Uh... Uh, just about every movie that you own on a hard drive, like what five gigabyte or like, what did you say, five yeah. different hard drives or something? Or yeah, whatever? yeah, 
I'm constantly running out of space too. Yeah, I have uh, I have a lot of different hard drives. Each each of them is one or two terabytes, and I need Jeez. more. How much space do you have on your computer? Well, not a lot. I mean, not not enough. Uh, I'm always in need of more. <laughs> I no, need, I mean, like I like when you got your computer, how much space did they give you on your hard drive originally? Oh, oh, this one. Uh, well, this one actually has two internal drives, so I think there there is a couple of. I think there's one or two terabytes of, of internal drive space already on this on this computer. So. Jeez. Still, it goes fast, believe me. It's not just movies, it's projects. And oh, yeah. Did you, did you put law, your, your movie uh, Fox Fur on your computer when you were making it? Oh, yeah. It? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all still on there, too. All the raw footage, all the the, the dailies, everything. Okay. Everything's uh, preserved, so I can you know always open up the project and make changes. Oh, that's cool. For, did for, you see this? Are you, oh, you're pointing the camera at your laptop. I'm pointing at, at the monitor, at you. <laughs> All right. Okay, I got you I right in the square. It might look like I'm pointing at something else, but I'm pointing right at you. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like you're pointing at. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see yeah. what's going on. I mean, I could, I could just point at the cam, at my webcam. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, little, it's a Toshiba camera that I have, so uh -huh. pretty, pretty good. I, I can do it in HD, but sometimes the, uh, the gigabyte of the files take so long to convert everything, and so I just do yeah. it in four by three. It just works better that way. Uh, smaller, easier to upload. But a lot, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, one reason why I'm, I, I'm friends with you or that I am interviewing you is because we've known each other. Well, we've never met, but uh, well, you watched my YouTube stuff a long time ago, about four years ago when I first started, and kind of liked what you right. saw. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it uh, just a matter of time till, till we met. Yeah. You know? <laughs> thanks to my friend David Moniker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Moniker, who was uh, you know, keeping, he was keeping very close tabs on on all of your your videos that were going up. Which I was surprised um, about because I, I thought most of them were really kind of horrible, <laughs> the ones that I did, you know, back in the day. Well, they were. I mean, uh, they had a charm. To, I mean, you know, it was it was fascinating seeing you walk around that 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 small town you were living in with your camera. Uh, <laughs> And just uh, everyone getting irritated at you, everyone, everyone you're pointing the camera at, you know. And, uh, <laughs> All the co-workers, anyway. <laughs> it just seemed like everyone, you know, was uh, was really angry at you in that town, everywhere you went. Um, so. Yeah. Especially and there was, one, yeah. there was one particular moment that I remember where you're walking around the street and you're, like, pointing the camera at traffic. You're like, you want, you want action? I'll give you action. <laughs> and you point... Like the most busy intersection in, uh, in, uh, in Thief River. Uh, Thief River, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, what 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 went on? I think a cop or like a ambulance went by or something like that. It's like uh, one of the first uh, around the town videos I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, interesting little town. It's it has um, it doesn't have some like Native American uh, population. Yeah, here and there. I mean, uh, Thief River has definitely. Uh, I don't live there anymore, but I live in Greenbush now, which is like a, t a smaller town, which is only like maybe less than 300 people. But uh -huh. uh, Thief River, yeah, had a lot of uh, a mix of a race and stuff over there. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. A lot of people that worked at the casino lived oh, in Thief right. River. Yeah. And I thought maybe it was near a reservation or, or something. No, the nearest reservation over there, see, believe it or not, I don't know if I told you this before or not, but the... Uh, when when the when I worked at the casino at the casino, the a lot of the Red Lakers who lived in uh, who didn't live in Thief River lived in Red Lake, and Red Lake is about an hour and a half from the casino. Oh, so they got a free shuttle while I had to spend gas money just to get to work uh, ten miles to work, and then they had a, they got a free shuttle like that was like a, over ninety minutes long, ninety miles long. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> The job was fine, but it just, uh, around that time, I could feel that something was going to happen, whether it be good or bad. Yeah. And eventually, I, as, as you found well, out, I got fired. <laughs> well, we could see that in the videos. I mean, we could tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing is we could track your progress in life as you're recording it every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, it is. But, uh. But I think I've come a long way. I mean, you know, compared to where I started now, I do things on kind of on a schedule where I set things, you know, like I record things ahead of time and then I uh -huh. schedule them for, the, for a release, you know, just because I was trying to figure out what can I do to maybe help me get viewers, 
to help me get people that would normally watch my stuff because they didn't think I was they didn't take me seriously at all. So I figure the one thing that I'm really good at is interviews with people. When I was on the radio, I did that all the time. And it's like, can it be done where even if I live with my parents right now, like I do, can I still do interviews with people thinking that I'm professional enough mm -hmm. with my background? So, anyway, this interview is not about me, it's about you. <laughs> because, I, you know, that's another thing. I tend to talk a lot about myself, but. But I, I, but we're here to talk about you the day one. Let's talk about your movie Foxfur, because that's an interesting subject. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another screening of it tomorrow at a uh, little club nearby. Is my voice coming through okay? Yeah, no, you're, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. You no, must have a built. Like... You must have a built-in camera, or yeah, built-in. Uh, yeah, or built-in mic, I should say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I can't monitor my voice. I can only. Uh monitor the receiving end. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Foxford. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> what did you want to know about it? <laughs> well, uh, I remember last time we talked about kind of the, without giving too much away, kind of the whole synopsis of what what it all, what it's all about. Because I was confused. I remember I told you I was confused by it. Right. And you kind oh, of, right. Okay. yeah, you told yeah, me I, kind of the technical way of, of previewing it kind of without giving too much away to the viewers. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, well, it's... Yeah, oh, God, I don't know if I want to... It's about a young, a young girl obsessed with, with UFOs and New Age things, David Icke, and uh, people in the field, in the, in, in the field of uh, spiritualism and uh, um, new, various New Age subjects, um, who... Uh, and, she, and she goes through a disillusionment process through the, through the film um, as it progresses. And she goes crazy... And gets, uh, she doesn't leave her room much. She gets evicted from her room and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get yourself evicted, huh? <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's about this girl and her, 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 uh, well, it's about a lot of things. The dead zone and, uh, yeah. Uh, but, um, and it's an incomplete film as well. It's, it's fragmented. Meaning, I, I shot what I could when I could. I had a very small amount of money. I had no money, and uh, was piecing it together over a course of a couple of years. Uh, oh, went black there. There. Oh, there <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Oh, Must be your screensaver. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's an incomplete film that was pieced together on a no budget scale over a couple of years. So. It, uh, you know, the narrative of it, ah, it's, it doesn't come across very clearly, but which is which is a very typical situation when you're making ultra low budget or no budget films. Sure. Because you can't you can't shoot the you know the complete story. Uh, it's it's difficult. And what you can shoot often ends up uh, well, just a lot different. Which is, which is good in, in a lot of ways. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But no, that, that's uh, kind of a good preview for people who haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's a good film overall. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I didn't hate it. I mean, I thought the the music alone was like, I could really jam to it. You know, I really could. Because of the yeah, 80s that's synth Tangerine music. Dream. Yeah. Tangerine Dream. Specifically, the scores for um, uh, Firestarter and um, uh, what else did I use? Uh, the various '80s Tangerine Dream scores. Yeah. Firestarter. I think there was some keep the keep. Um, there was uh, a lot of different things in there. I'm blanking out right now. No, oh, that's uh, all right. It's here, dark. <laughs> No, no, it really was a good film. It had a great. Uh, you should have like released like a CD of the soundtrack. <laughs> that would have been alright. Well, well, anyone who's a Tangerine Dream fan knows where all that came from. Yeah, uh, it's it's easy it's easy to get. They're a very popular group. You were able to get the 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 okay to use the music in your movie? No, it's that's a whole separate issue. Oh, okay, and. and um, you know, finding an original composer is, is a difficult process, for me, anyways. 
because I'm, I'm very picky on music. Okay. And just finding someone who's who's uh, you know happy with and and have the money to pay and that sort of thing. It's always it's always a, a near impossible task. So I usually don't even go there. Uh, you know, I'll just use what music that I feel is best, and uh, I don't worry about that later. Yeah. But did, did uh, your people that you uh, hired or that auditioned for your uh, movie uh, have enough talent where they could multitask or whatever, make it like a little score for you? Well, I know people who are composers, but uh, it's just a, it's an it's an extra step involved in post production that's difficult to deal with because I'm so particular about the, you know the music aspect of, of, uh, of filmmaking that, um, you know, I could spend years just trying to find, you know, on a no-budget scale, someone that I can afford to hire. I could spend years trying to find someone that I'm happy with and still not be satisfied with it. So, sure. uh, it's, it's, you know, I don't know how that is uh, ever going to, if I, if I continue to make films on any scale, uh, I don't know how getting an original score, that part of it is... Uh, is going to work out, you know, I just have to hope that, uh, get lucky and find someone who's, who's every bit as good as, you know, Tangerine Dream or Jerry Goldsmith or Peter Gabriel or somebody like that. Or even John Williams. <laughs> great John Williams, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, if I had a, uh, yeah, if I had a budget for an orchestral score, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you never know nowadays, you know. But you're not giving up totally on filmmaking, I mean, you have some other ideas, don't you? For what you want to do in the future? Or don't well, you? Well, <laughs> no, I do. I have, yeah, I have a few vague ideas of uh, of some future projects. But uh, you should do a comedy. I mean, like an actual comedy. <laughs> well, all of my films are comedies in in a, in a way. Um, they all have a comedic quality to them. They're all satires yeah. or uh, some form of uh, some form of comedy. But like, who were your who were your like your influences like when you started doing films and all that? Like, who who influenced you to 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 do the films to be a, a filmmaker? Well, early on, it was uh, it was a lot of mainstream directors from the seventies and eighties. Uh, early on, I mean, it was Spielberg foremost. Yeah, and um, oh, like Ralph Bakshi and. Uh, Ken Russell and um, uh, Bob Fosse and Francis Coppola, uh, people like that. And then later, I started getting more interested in in uh, foreign directors, foreign filmmakers, uh, uh, Russian directors, and um, like uh, Tarkovsky and uh, Lars von Trier and people like that. Okay. So, uh, well, that sounds like a good list of people. It's a very wide spectrum. Yeah. And, and I'm always trying to catch up on uh, on a lot of foreign cinema. There's a lot of great films outside of the U.S. You know, that, that uh, there's a lot to catch up on. I mean, there's a whole world, there's a whole universe of films from, from all different countries. You know, from Japan, Russia, Germany, uh, Spain, you know, you name it. Um, and, yeah. You know, to uh, try to catch up on. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a lot of films that nobody's even seen before, or never heard of. You know, that it's that's, that's out there and that probably will never see the light of day. And that's kind of sad, you know, because these people put their heart and soul into what they want to do, whether it's a foreign film or independent film or whatever, and mm -hmm. they want it to be seen. You know, but the yeah. sad thing is, people want mainstream stuff. You know, so people don't understand the independent. Certain people, anyway. Some people understand the independent scene, but some people just want everything to be mainstream. Like, if it's not in the theater, it's not good. You know? <laughs> well, it's difficult now because there's so much. It's The field is so heavily saturated. There's so many different markets now and market niches. and uh, uh, Yeah, it's all... Uh, yeah, it's uh, you get lost in the sea if, if you're an independent film. It's a huge sea of, of, uh, of ideas out there. Yeah. That you can easily get lost in. Um, so unless you have, uh, you know, a significant budget and big marketing campaign and uh, 
a good release. So. Yeah. Oh, who's this? Wait a minute, someone's texting me here. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what movies have you seen lately, like on DVDs? Well, uh, I uh, just uh, bought the Halloween set, you know, the Michael oh. Myers set. Of course, there were Blu-rays, there were DVDs. The, yeah. DVD, the DVDs that I bought, uh, have you ever seen a movie called The Willies at all? The Willies? Yeah, The Willies. I've it, heard of it. The, the Willies. W-I-L-L-I-E-S? Yep. Yeah, I, I know of it, but I don't think I've seen that one. It's with, like, Sean Astin okay. from The Goonies. And he's it's like, from, yeah, it's from okay. 1990 or 1991, somewhere around there. Okay. And he's like, you know, it's like a kid movie. It's like talking about uh, like little horror stories or whatever, like campfire stories uh -huh. or whatever. I haven't seen it yet. I just saw the trailer. But it inspired me because of Michael Ray Bauer, who I interviewed uh, oh, right. earlier this month or last month anyway, uh, was in it. Uh -huh. Was one of the main guys in it. So. Uh -huh. And then I watched uh, Poltergeist. That was good. The original? Uh, yeah, the original. The Blu-ray? Uh, uh, DVD. Oh. Sorry. I'm looking at the Willies. Oh, Poltergeist was a... Uh, uh, that was a... Uh, that was an inspirational film. I saw that when it first came out. In 70 millimeter. Jeez. In the summer of 82. I can only imagine Great. what you were probably thinking. It's like, what the hell am I going to see in this movie? <laughs> Will I like no, it? I Will I hate it? it? <laughs> oh no! It was. I mean, I remember when you know uh, when it was out, and yeah, I really wanted to see it. It was Spielberg, of course. Even though Toby Hooper is is the credited director of that film. It's really yeah, but back in those days, Spielberg. though, you but back in those days, you could go on Facebook to see what the trailer was going to be all about. You had to like see it on TV or wait till you saw the movie. So how do well, you how do you know that how do you know that this is going to be something that you would like? Even if it's Steven Spielberg related, I'm trying to tickle your tickle your brain here. <laughs> well, I, uh, uh, you know, the internet age has, uh, has, uh, in some ways, um, it's, uh, it's lessened the the film experience in a lot of ways because uh, everything is reduced now to a uh, to a web clip on the internet uh, sure. trailers. Whereas before you you know you had to go to a theater to see something and and you would see TV ads for it or you'd see trailers in the theater and uh, the, ex the overall experience just was so much greater um, and of course there wasn't uh, you know there wasn't a lot of other noise out there to to uh, compete with it uh, but um, I don't know how to answer that question other than that I mean that's the way it was that's the way it was always. You know, at least prior to the uh, the post TV age, when when uh, when new movie releases were were uh, mostly advertised on TV and in the theater. But prior to the TV age, it was all theatrical. You, you'd see trailers to new movies uh, when you went to see a, a movie at the theater. Sure. Uh, the whole experience, though, was was just more valued and had had more of an impact on you. I think though, in the in the pre-internet age. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I mean, I I remember what it was like. I mean, uh, I'm 29, and so I've seen a lot of prior to the days of the internet. I mean, I saw hell. I saw Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 1995 when that came out, a uh, uh -huh. movie, <laughs> and I loved it. You know, <laughs> not knowing what I was going to see or whatever, but I knew that I was going to like it because it was Power Rangers related. So Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. What's the first movie? you remember saying at the youngest age oh geez I think if I can really figure it out the movie Walk Like a Man with Walk Howie, Like a Man with Howie Mandel and oh. Christopher Lloyd that's one of the first ones I remember seeing as a kid okay does, does it uh, ring a bell at all do you remember it I don't think I saw that one either it's Walk from like, like 1987 it's on DVD but it's like a very rare, like, you'd have to, like, find a really good deal to, to get it on DVD. I just, you know, I found other sources to get it, but I, uh, the DVD oh, now is like, like, they, Amazon wants, like, too much for it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's kind of 
kind of an obscurity, isn't it? In the yeah. late 80s. Yeah. But it was a good movie. I mean, I, I loved it. I mean, it's one of the first ones that I can honestly say that I remember watching as a kid. But back in those days, I didn't know how movies were made, so I thought everything that happened on TV was real life. Until I finally learned what movies were like. That's why I didn't really get into horror, because I actually thought horror stuff was real. I, You know, when somebody got killed, I thought, why would somebody want to watch if somebody get killed, you know? I didn't know how movies were made then, like I do now. So, I don't know if it takes the fun out of it now or what, but... That was the director's last film, too. He was a, he was a uh, director from the 40s and 50s. Okay. 50s, 50s mainly, 50s, 60s, and 70s. I have the poster, anyway, of the movie, which I'm pretty proud of. But he retired after that, apparently. Uh, the director of A Touch of Class. Okay. And the pre- oh, and the, president, or the prisoner of Second Avenue. Was the only two I've seen of his Touch of Class with uh, Glenda Jackson and George Siegel, which I'm sure you've seen, and uh, Prisoner of Second Avenue with uh, Jack Lemon. I know that's one of your favorites as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know very... me. I, I I do love Jack <laughs> Lemon, but I've never seen all of his stuff. <laughs> that's a very good film, actually. Prisoner of Second Avenue was uh, um, Neil Simon, I believe. Okay, I've and, heard of uh, him. He's a great writer. Really witty humor, and I believe that was um, yeah, it was Lemon and um, and what's her name uh, and Bancroft, who's, who's great. Okay. You can see that on uh, late night TV. But it's from that director. That's actually a good one. I would recommend that one. Okay. Uh, if you ever had the time. But well, what be- else do you remember? Well, before we run out of time, my, my camera. I, oh, I right. want to. I don't, I don't want to film too much because you know that it might not record. So we want to ask you sure. one, one last question before we go. Uh, what one are, last. One last. I'll probably talk to you afterwards obviously uh, after the interview is done. But, uh, well, keep recording. Yeah, keep recording of course. I am recording right now. It's still recording. Yeah, keep the camera going. <laughs> you'll want to you'll want to edit a lot of this interview out. This is a lot. There's a lot of uh, dead space. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of dead space in this interview. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I do I, I do my I do my filmmaking differently. You know. I'm not getting paid. I, I just do it because it's, it's the love of the work. But I'm going to upload this right after we get done talking. So just the way it is. <laughs> anyway, the last question I have for you, and I've asked this before when we did the audio interview, uh, what advice would you give to people who, uh, to anybody that wanted to become a director or filmmaker uh, or whatever, you know, what you do? <laughs> well... It's a brain fart moment, I know. <laughs> what advice? Uh, yeah. Just don't do it. Oh. Just forget forget yeah. it. Don't even think about it. It's not worth it. It's a lot of work. No payoff. There's too many people doing it. There's too much, too many people spinning their wheels now. Uh, there's no point in it. If you'd gotten into it 30 plus years ago, then you would have been okay maybe 40 years ago. Yeah, if you've gotten if you've gotten into it over forty years ago, you'd be okay. But today, uh, I don't know. It's um, it's just too much. It's it's too much, and too many people making films for the wrong reasons. And uh, the, the whole uh, the, the the aesthetics have changed so much too uh, with with cinema. The aesthetics in terms of uh, what is a good film, what makes a good film, uh, you know, what people's interpretations of a good movie are. I completely, I feel like I'm always getting further and further away from the reality that exists now and the reality that once was, the further you go back in time, as far as what people consider good and quality. Sure. So, uh, I mean, it just baffles me, you know, these, these awful movies that are being made now and, and how they're heaped with so much praise and, and uh, of course, they're financially successful and everything else. Yeah. That's, not to, that's not to say that great movies uh, weren't quite often, um, you know, they struggled to make money. They, were, they weren't financially successful, at least in their initial run. It took a long time. That's a common situation for good movies. It always has been. Uh, it's always been a problem with... with with films, certain films always taking them too long to find their audience. Um, 
end, which is kind of unfortunate because it's in the case of, say, independent films or independent filmmakers, it can take so long by the time a film finally finds its audience and it's a huge, people are keeping it, you know, people have discovered it, uh, that filmmaker is 80 years old or dead and it doesn't matter anymore. It just, it just takes so long. But, um, I'm, I'm uh, digressing a little bit, but yeah, just the aesthetics of, uh, how things have changed is kind of disturbing in a way, um, the way everything is like a video game now or, you know, following such a strict sort of, uh, set of, uh, formula, um, all right. Well, yeah, no, that that pretty much clarifies it. I'd say. I mean, <laughs> the best that we can, anyway. Well, I want to thank you, there, Damon. I mean, it's it's fun talking to you. You know, you you actually inform me a lot more than than I ever thought you would. <laughs> you really, really did. So thanks for being a part of the Frankie Slauson show, and and uh, hopefully you'll uh, tell people that uh, you were on the show. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> oh well, you're gonna post it on. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna post it, and it'll be. It should be out here within before the morning or so, or maybe by within 24 hours anyway of this. So you got the Halloween uh, Blu-rays. Yeah. 